Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this nice little linear equation here. And you can see we're dealing with the variable g, so we're looking for the solution, i.e., what is g equal to? So if you think you could solve this particular equation, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer in just one moment, and then, of course, I'm going to solve this step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, but you need to be learning from someone or something that you actually understand. And I really try to teach math in a super clear way so all people can get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, uh, maybe a teacher certification exam, something with math on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in uh, the description as well. Most people do not take detailed enough notes. You have to take awesome math notes if you expect to be great in mathematics. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, particular um, equation. And again, we're dealing with a linear equation. This is something that if you're at like the pre-algebra level, certainly the algebra one level, you should be able to solve without too much difficulty. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this equation right now. And here it is, g is equal to 13 over 9. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got it right. And if you did get this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can go ahead and tell your friends and families that you were, like, amazing today in algebra and um, you're able to solve these basic linear equations. So solving equations in algebra is, you know, a huge part of what algebra is about. And um, when you first start learning how to solve equations, you don't start with something like this. We'll get into this particular problem here in a second. You kind of build yourself uh, up with basic, basic linear equations, i.e. what we call one-step equations. So you start off with something like this, 2x is equal to 10, and hopefully uh, you know how to solve this particular equation. It involves one step. Let's take a look at another equation that uh, requires only one step to solve. Maybe something like this. Okay, y minus 1 is equal to 9. This is These are examples of one-step equations because all I have to do is take literally one step to get the answer, right? So here we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. And here we just simply add 1 to both sides of the equation. So we got y is equal to 10. So these are examples of one-step equations. And then you move on to things like two-step equations. I'm going to give you an example of something like that. 2x minus 3 is equal to 7. So this particular equation requires two steps to solve. And then we have multi-step equations, multi-step linear equations. And that's what we're dealing with now. So if you don't think you're kind of on a solid ground in terms of these basic equations, well, this particular equation might be a little bit too, you know, maybe a little bit too much for you. But if you're um, having difficulties with basic linear equations, a couple of quick suggestions. You can check out uh, my pre-algebra course. That's probably where I would direct you uh, to. If you happen to be in Algebra 1, you can check out that course as well. It will really help you out. But let's go ahead and get into this equation. So you can see here we have one half being multiplied by everything that's inside these brackets. Now, these uh, brackets like this are the same as parentheses, okay? So don't let these brackets fool you. You could rewrite this problem using parentheses. Brackets and parentheses, and even these little squiggly brackets, which wouldn't really be used um, in an algebraic equation like this, they're what we call grouping symbols, okay? And typically, you're likely going to have parentheses, but I threw in the brackets as well because it's not... Um, uncommon to see brackets or to use bra uh, brackets in mathematics. So anyways, you just need to understand that brackets and parentheses are the same things and they are grouping symbols. So what we want to do is clean up, simplify everything inside these grouping symbols before we start uh, looking at these numbers on the outside 
of these grouping symbols. And what we need to be thinking about is the distributive property. Okay, but before we get to the distributive property, let's go ahead and start cleaning up what we can inside of these parentheses. So let's go ahead and get started now. So here I have 10G minus 8 plus 4G minus 2. Well, we have some like terms, 10G and 4G, we could combine. They are like terms, that's 14G. And then here I have negative eight and a negative two. When I add those up, I have negative 10. All right, so that's the first thing we wanna do is we wanna simplify as much as possible. Let's take a look at this uh, 6G minus one. Well, there's nothing uh, we can really do there. So that is uh, as simple as we can write these expressions inside these particular um, parentheses. Now what we have to do is use the distributive property to take this problem to the next step. All right, so what is the distributive property? Well, hopefully you know what that is. If you do not, uh, basically formally, it's A times B plus C, and that's equal to AB plus AC. That's kind of the definition of the distributive property. But basically, what we need to do is to distribute, right? That word distribute. We have to take this one half in this particular um, part of the problem, and we're gonna distribute, which means we're gonna multiply this one half by this 14G, and then we're also gonna uh, multiply this one half by this negative 10. Okay, we're allowed to do that because of the distributive property. So one half times 14G is 7G, all right? So that's what that's equal to. And then one, one half times this negative 10 is negative five. All right, so the distributive property is a particular property that uh, I think sometimes um, students uh, believe they know better than they actually do. And it's a pretty common place where students make mistakes. So if you're kind of rusty on the distributive property, or if you need more help, again, check out those respective courses that I mentioned, pre-algebra and algebra one, go through, uh, go through all of this stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get into um, this side of the equation. So before we could do anything else about moving variables to the left or right numbers to the right, we have to do the distributive property, okay? Because we can't do anything with the terms the way they're written right now. So let's go ahead and do the distributive property on this side. So we have 2 thirds times 6G is 4G, okay? So again, you need to know how to deal with fractions, i.e. 2 thirds times 6 or 6G. So 2 thirds times 6 is what? Well, 3 goes into 6. 2, 2 times 2 is 4, or 2 times 6 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that's 4G, and then 2 thirds times this negative 1 is negative 2 thirds. Okay, so this is where we're at so far, so now we're just kind of taking one step at a time to continue to, uh, to continually simplify this equation, and that's what you have to do, it's just really, don't try to take too many steps at once, just take one step check your work, make sure everything looks good. But now we're kind of off to the races with this equation right here, or this uh, uh, the way the equation is at in this stage. Okay, so remember we're going from our original equation and each equation that we're, uh, we're writing is actually equivalent to the original equation. It's just, a little, it's just written in a little bit more simpler way, right? Ultimately, the simplest way is gonna be G equals to some number. Right? That's the simplest way we can write that equation, and that is what we call the solution to the equation. But let's just talk about the equation at this stage of the game. Okay, So after we kind of cleaned up all the like terms in the beginning, did the distributive property, what do we want to be thinking about? Well, we want to move our variable, variable terms to the left and all of our numbers to the right. Okay, So that's kind of what we're thinking about right now. So we have this 4G on this side of the equation, we're gonna to have to move it over here. And then we have this number, negative five, we're gonna to have to move that over here. So now we're gonna to have to uh, take these individual steps. And again, just wanna take it one step at a time. So let's go and start off with the 4G, okay? So I'm gonna move that 4G uh, from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna get rid of it on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna subtract 4G over here. All right, a positive 4G minus 4G is going to be zero. So I kind of make that disappear over here. But you got to remember the main rule in algebra, and that is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. That's the cool thing about algebra. You could basically do anything you want to um, one side of the equation. As long as you do it equally to the other side, you could take any step you want. So here, 
I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4g from both sides of the uh, both sides of the equation. So I got positive 7g, kind of adding down in, in a column manner. Uh, so you got positive 7g plus a negative 4g, or 7g minus 4g is 3g. Negative 5 plus nothing is negative 5. So we got 3g uh, minus 5. Positive 4g minus 4g is 0. Okay, we don't need to write that 0, but these kind of disappear. So we have negative 2 thirds plus 0 is negative 2 thirds. All right, so effectively we moved this 4g over to this side of the equation and kind of linked it up with this 7g, and there we go. So now we have all our variable terms to the left. Now we need to work on getting all of our numbers to the right. So we're just basically going to take the same step as we did with the 4g, but we're going to do it with the number here. So how do we uh, get rid of a negative 5 over on this side of the equation? Well, we can get rid of it by just adding a 5 to it. But if you add a 5 to this negative 5, you have to do the exact same thing to this side of the equation. So let's go ahead and add down. So 3g plus nothing is 3g. Negative 5 plus a positive 5 is 0. We don't need to write that 0. This disappears. And then we have negative 2 thirds plus 5 is going to be this, right? We have a positive 5 minus 2 thirds, right? So negative 2 thirds plus 5. I can write that this way, 5 minus 2 thirds. So we got to figure out what this is, right? 5 minus 2 thirds. And this is where we get to have extra fun in this problem by dealing with fractions. Now, of course, you need to be strong at fractions at this point in your, um, you know, your math studies and whatnot, because you are doing some algebra. If you're weak in fractions and you're kind of weak with these basic equations, I'm going to direct you specifically to my pre-algebra course because I got a full chapter uh, in there on fractions. I also have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this stuff as well. But let's go ahead and make sure you understand how to do this problem, 5 minus 2 thirds. Now, some of you could be thinking to yourself, all right, 5, if I take away 2 thirds, that's going to give me 4 and 1 third because you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I add back in a, a 2 thirds to a 1 third or 4 1 third, I'd get back to 5. So if you kind of reason through it and you just kind of knew or you could see the solution uh, to this problem as 4 and 1 third, that's, per that's perfectly fine. As long as you're confident in your answer, we have a mixed number here. But if you weren't sure, go ahead and just do this actual uh, fraction problem. So we have 5 minus 2 thirds or 5 over 1. So what's the lowest common denominator here? Well, it'd be 3, so I have to multiply this fraction's denominator by 3 and its numerator by 3. So we're going to end up with 15 over 3 minus 2 thirds. And of course, we'll subtract the numerators. And we got 13 thirds. Now, just to kind of verify, you know, 4 and 1 third, this mixed fraction is the same as this improper fraction. We can just kind of check this here, right? So 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13 or 13 thirds. So these are equivalent. All right, but you want to go ahead and uh, always write your answers when you're uh, solving equations. Just work with improper fractions, not mixed numbers. So let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so now we uh, know that 5 minus 2 thirds is that 13 thirds. So our equation right now is this. 3G is equal to 13 over 3. So how do we solve for uh, g? Well, you could divide both sides of the equation by 3. But uh, in order, but rather uh, than doing that, the best way to, uh, to solve this particular equation is to multiply both sides of the equation by 1 third. See, dividing by 3 here is the same thing as multiplied by 1 third, right? So 1 third times 3g is uh, equivalent to 3g over 3. So instead of thinking of it as division, think of it as multiplication. Again, these are strategies that you need to learn when you're dealing with basic one-step equations. All right, so I'm going to multiply uh, the left-hand side by one-third because one-third times 3G is going to give me a 1G or G. That's what I'm looking for. But remember the rule in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So one-third times 3G is going to be G. And then we have... Uh, 13 over 3 times 1 third. Of course, we're multiplying the respective numerators and denominators. We're going to get 13 over 9, and there is our solution. And by the way, no need to uh, take this improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number. As long as it's fully reduced, that should be good to go for most math teachers out there. Okay, so hopefully 
uh, you were able to get this correct. Now, if you weren't able to get this right, the whole idea is, did you learn something? Okay. Now, again, if you're at the pre-algebra level or beyond, this is kind of basic skills that you need to know. So if there's a particular part of this problem, you know, whether it be the uh, distributive property or working with fractions, whatever you do, just don't assume, like, don't think to yourself, well, maybe I'll do better next time. You have to address any uh, misunderstandings or weak things you don't have. Um, a fully understanding this particular problem because you're going to see them over and over again. So the earlier you kind of address any weaknesses you have, the better off you're going to be. So anyways, again, uh, I would uh, probably ultimately uh, suggest specifically my pre-algebra course if you need uh, help with an equation at this level. But hopefully this little video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.